So I've been trapped in an underground hellscape full of monster worms for the past four months, don't ask. So you can imagine video content's been pretty sudden scarce. Thankfully, I was able to devise an escape plan with some refugee monster centipedes, thanks to the emergency eldritch monster funding I received from ExpressVPN, your all-in-one VPN provider, this video sponsor. Nobody likes being watched. Which is why I'm staring into a camera lens right now and not your live webcam feed. Ah, oh, but holy dead monarch, your internet service provider's got their blinkers pressed up to your monitor, eager to binge your favorite white video game reviewer alongside you. Uh, breach of privacy much? Well, thankfully, ExpressVPN's whole thing is putting a stop to that <coughs> by rerouting 100% of your network traffic through their secure encrypted servers, protecting you from Big Man Charlie, the sausage boss, undercover chicken. I, uh, listen, there isn't much better of a service than ExpressVPN to mass your IP address and protect your personal data from governments, big tech, and predatory advertisers. Legit, I am not somebody who enjoys the idea of my online activity being tracked, collected, and sold, especially as someone who does practically almost everything on the World Wide Web. Whether that is talking to friends, working, gaming, that's pretty much my entire 24-7 day-to-day in the hands of some corporate grease liquor. Goodness gracious! ExpressVPN is here to slash those worries away though. It is a genuinely helpful tool, chock full of quality of life additions, including blazing fast ease of use, their trusted server technology making it physically impossible for ExpressVPN's VPN servers to store logs of any of their customers. And hey, it's actually one of the most top-rated VPN providers on the planet, as far as the Milky Way goes, god knows, but as long as you squeebs are stuck on that dirty hunk of rocky cool home, ExpressVPN VPN is the way to go. Seriously, this is as easy as urine? Power up ExpressVPN, connect to one of their tens of servers, and boom, camo! And hey, if you're feeling extra crazy, you can even connect to servers outside your own country in order to bypass Geoblocks. Hello! Oh, oh messy, oh, we, we. France is finally good for something after all. If you want to get your hands on all this and more, hit the link in the description below to get your first three months absolutely free. Yeah, sorry for the wait. To make up for the lack of anything this past quarter, though, I... Uh... <sighs> Jesus, there's gotta be something here. Did I not stockpile? Or did... Oh, uh... Right, here's a bunch of shit you've already seen before with a few filters I threw over the footage to digitally replace me with my present self. For funsies. That counts as fresh content, right? What? Whatever, roll the... So, I've been a part of this whole FNAF thing since before the release of the second game. In fact, the first video I ever made on the series I posted only days before it dropped on Steam. And during the time I've been aware of the series, I've transitioned from child to adult. I'm not joking, FNAF 1 is nearly 6 years old, it's nuts. I was 12 when the game released. I am now 18, and with the game series as old and as popular as FNAF, it's inevitable that a few little tricksters have had their hand at spreading false reports and rumours, fake leaks, hoaxes, the works, and holy hell is there a shitload of that to discuss today. Personally, I joined the big ol' hype train back in November of 2014, right in the middle of the lead up to FNAF 2. In fact, I believe the very first teaser I ever saw on Scott's website was that marionette image, or the puppet as we know him today. Yeah, remember when Scott Games teasers were a thing? But that's not what we're here to talk about today, no. Today, I'm bringing the dirty fakes to the table, the teaser images that people would swear on their mother's lives were legitimate, but ultimately turned out to be nothing more than hearsay. The fake emails, the easter egg hoaxes, my objective here is basically to point fingers and preserve judgement for the rest of all time. So, in chronological order, I am going to bring up each and every major FNAF hoax I can find, spanning all six main games. I'm very barely counting anything beyond FNAF 3 as the hoaxes really started to fizzle out after then. Oh and real quick, let me establish that there are differences between hoaxes and rumours. A hoax is a deliberately fabricated image or video designed to trick the reader into believing it to be the ultimate truth, you know hard cold evidence. Whereas a rumour, well, do I have to explain what a rumour is? Basically, just speculation. I'll give honourable mentions to rumours that already made the rounds, but I really want to hone in on hoaxes. Yeah, and I know there's some overlap between the two, but I'm talking about the visual stuff. Anyway, here we go. Five Nights at Freddy's 1 was actually pretty safe from people spreading false info about it. Bar one exception, the infamous Sparky the Dog animatronic, arguably the very first FNAF hoax. He would supposedly appear on the backstage camera, peeking out from behind the door, with the shadow conveniently masking most of his features. And I have to say, as someone who actually fell for this, I'm impressed even to this day. For the time, it was a deviously convincing fake, and even people who were familiar with the game were falling for it. He's tucked away perfectly, and it's totally plausible to imagine missing him right at the corner of your eye during gameplay. Of course, assuming he'd work kinda like the way the posters on the wall do, for example, 
example, will they have a small chance of switching to a rare screen? Hell, even when I first learned about the series in the midst of FNAF 2's hype, it was still a hot topic of discussion. But in reality, <laughs> yeah, this is all he is. I think I've sneezed at one of these before. The creator eventually came forward and officially stated it was nothing more than hijinks and a quote unquote hastily painted mess. Yeah, no kidding. I have to give props where props are due though. This is certainly a really convincing fake. Most of the rest of the hubbub about this game came in the form of rumors. Keep in mind, this was only the first game, which in its early days didn't have much of a fandom to, you know, make hoaxes. Stuff like a supposed visible dead body inside Chica, the infamous Foxy is a good guy theory, the idea that the phone guy was the killer, the handprint on Freddy's face given light to the rumor that he caused the bite of 87. This was all fan speculation and nothing more. Oh, and apparently typing 666 into custom night unlocks the kitchen. I was never aware of that one, but just like the others, it apparently proved popular. Now, if we're talking straight up early FNAF hoaxes, not tied to one game or the other, there were a select few fake images that circulated around this time that I'd like to shove into their own subcategory. Ladies and gentlemen, <sighs> FNAF in real life. I won't go too deep down this rabbit hole, but people, or let's be real here, kids, were convinced that Freddy Fazbear's Pizza existed. Of course, let's disregard the fact that not a single soul had any semblance or an idea of what a Freddy Fazbear was prior to the game's release, but look, it's a compressed JPEG of a badly photoshopped sign on the front of a building. How could you debunk that? And then someone went ahead and actually made the animatronics into actual animatronics. Yep, definitely didn't add fuel to the fire though. <laughs> FNAF 2 was really where hoaxes started to ramp up, and I'd argue this is where the FNAF hoax craze was at its peak. The introduction of a slew of brand new characters meant there was a hell of a lot more wiggle room for interpretation, meaning a hell of a lot more ways to trick the community. Unlike its previous entry, Freddy's 2 didn't really have one overarching hoax, it just had a variety of equally strange and confusing rare images. Of course, you got the classic purple guy animatronic in the office. I never really understood this one. What, was the killer an empty costume? A ghost? It originated from a video posted soon after the game's release, appearing for a measly one frame before disappearing due to realising how much of a stupid idea it is. For some reason, this one really seemed to take off actually, spawning a ton of fan art and a few mods even. What I found most interesting is that in the grand scheme of things, the video origin isn't even that popular in comparison to just how much the screenshots been shared around. I had no idea the video even existed prior to research. Yeah, the rest of the more known hoaxes for this game for under the camp of what I like to call print screens disappointment. We got Shadow Balloon Boy, whatever the hell this abomination is, and <laughs> one of the more believable ones was the puppet in the office. Now, there is an image in the game files that suggests that at one point he was intended to have been viewable in the office for some reason, but as it turns out, unlike any other hoax in this video, it's actually real. No, of course it's fake, you absolute pleb. Some other notable hoaxes include the quote-unquote grey puppet. Oh, it's this guy again. Yeah, again, I had no inkling of a notion of this guy's existence before going ahead and researching these hoaxes. Yeah, it seems this is when video hoaxes started to get prevalent. Take Epic Surfing Vid's mysterious purple figure, what I recall being referred to at the time as that static guy, for example. Roxo seems to be a pretty big figure here, though, responsible for a fair handful of these hoaxes. Purple guy, animatronic, grey puppets, and a few others all in video form. Anyway, most of the hoaxes from this era are palette swaps, really, as it seems, and I can say with all honesty, nothing can truly stand against the original Sparky the Dog in terms of believability. Popularity? Now that's a whole different story, but between this and this, who's more likely to inform you they're infected with a severe case of measles before they step too close? Yeah, that's what I thought. Oh, and of course, honourable mentions go to just the best rumours I've ever heard. First being the idea that the animatronics in the game scream the word freedom. What, you don't believe me? Hey, you hear it every time they get you. <laughs> Next is the theory that if you reverse the trailer audio, you hear the words Mike killed all, or suicides didn't work. Yeah, take your pick. Finally, and people were really adamant about this one, people were convinced that this shadow right here was some secret character or something, like a cat maybe? I mean, yeah, it looks a little out of the ordinary, but this is just straight up the regular frame for Cam 11. I get the phrase hiding in plain sight, but come on now. So, all in all, FNAF 2's hoaxes definitely made a bigger impact, but nothing really holds the candle to that classic Sparky fake. But what? what? No, no, we don't talk about those. Holy freaking baloney, if nothing convinced you that any of the FNAF 2 hoaxes were real, then... Well, Five Nights at Freddy's 3 was arguably the most hyped Five Nights game. It took everything we knew about the first two games and completely abandoned it. This teaser from December of 2014 alone opened up so much rumour and speculation, it was ridiculous. But even before the official announcement of the game, people were hoaxing it up, so I'll split this segment into two parts, pre-FNAF 3 and post-FNAF 3. 
Hold on to your arguably shitty gameplay mechanics because this one's a real doozy. So pre-3, we have pretty much a load of FNAF 2 hoaxes again. That being said, they were all made in the context of a potential sequel, with this fake leak for Freddy Lands being a solid and pretty terrible example. Here we have two of the most well-known fake images, and as far as I'm concerned, they weren't even intended to have fooled people by the creator, Fazbogle. This guy made a lot of the most iconic FNAF edits, actually. Of course, the most notable of which were his Withered BB and Withered Puppet, but most if not all of these still seem to pop up every once in a while. And in one specific instance, even to the point of inspiring official merch. Ah, <laughs> whoops. There were still a fair few image edits this time around, aside from Fazbogle's work, including this strangely convincing Bonnie. Of course, we now know it's an edited withered bunny, but at the time, the shoddy image quality naturally led me on a bit. I don't think I ever imagined it was a real FNAF 3 leak, but it was enough to get me thinking. We also got this image. Yep. Another infamous image edit was definitely this one. While it was never passed off as an individual hoax, people believed this mysterious figure at the time was in fact Fredbear, if you mirrored the image of course. In a similar situation to the Purple Guy animatronic hoax, this also got extremely popular, even more so, spawning a ton of fan art and interpretations. Some guy even went as far as to make a fan game about it. Some people even claim that the animatronic had sharp red teeth here, and some people claim it's not even the original model we ended up with in-game at all. And I can see both those points, but it does look like that original Springtrap model was never changed beyond that first teaser image. Oh, and uh, how could I forget this? Ah yes, when the theory that FNAF 3 would be a free run game was ever popular, oh boy. What times? Well, it looks like we finally got an original 3D model that somebody tried to pass off as legitimate, my hat goes off to you. But we can't talk about 3D hoaxes without the holy trinity. Again, none of these images were ever made with the intention of ever fooling anybody, but holy hell did they. More so Emil Mako's early version of Candy the Cat and his animatronic Markiplier, but Fullhorn's Ice Cream Man was definitely thrown around a bit too. Finally, one thing I don't think I can ever forget was when somebody used for the first time. Yeah, the infamous email leak detailing that a special trailer for the third game would release on Christmas Day. Well, we've had five of those since then, I'm not keeping my hopes up. I think there was also a rumour of a Santa Claus animatronic around this time too. Yeah, it was dumb, and I'm glad we've moved past that. And yeah, I'd argue that's pretty much it for brief FNAF 3 hoaxes. Okay, as for post FNAF 3 hoaxes, we got Phantom Bonnie. <laughs> Yeah, that's it. I find it odd that there really wasn't a ton of fabrication once the game dropped. I mean, the circumstances weren't all that different from the first two, so what the hell happened to it? Anyway, I definitely think this game had the biggest amount of hoaxes made for it to date, ranging from stupid to slightly plausible. But at least some of them tried, some being the key word here. Four is when the frequency in fake images and videos took a dive all of a sudden. A few still existed, but as more people realised that it's a bit hard to, you know, leak game info when the game info is locked on one man's computer, the harder it was to fool anybody. Leading up to release, I really don't remember a ton of hoaxes being spread around. Now, rumours are a different story, people had all sorts of crazy ideas as to what the gameplay in this entry would entail. But I mean, the game teasers themselves were enough to quench people, it seems. They're definitely the kind of thing fans would have aspired to have made as hoaxes anyway. And that they did. Why not hoaxes? Tons of people, myself included, made nightmare variations of various Five Nights characters, spawning countless fake teasers. Some were pretty well done, others were not. So in terms of actual hoaxes, there seems to really only be one that sticks out as most prevalent, Nightmare JJ, with the initial post being made only a couple of hours after the Halloween DLC drop. Yeah, I'm not going to be around the bush here. I made Nightmare JJ. I made the hoax. Yeah, me. Go motion, and I think it's safe to say it's potentially the most well known FNAF 4 hoax. Now, of course, that's not saying much, there were hardly any hoaxes to compete with. But that being said, it did seem to fool a couple people at the time. To be fair, I did drop that image right before the game files had been looked at, and I think if anybody's fast enough, you could potentially still make a leak that way these days. But it's a hell of a lot more of a challenge than during the FNAF 2 to 3 era. Unfortunately, the actual image file no longer exists on my computer, but hey, Razbowski made a video covering it and mentions me, so, you know, that's proof enough, surely. But really, there's not a lot more to say about this entry. I made the one hoax, and I think a couple people might have made one or two Halloween DLC teaser hoaxes, maybe, uh, but nothing I can spout from the top of my head. Yeah, I feel like I have to lump all these games together into their own section. There really was not a lot going on in the fake leaks department here as a unit. Sister location? People thought this was Spring Bonnie's reflection. Yeah, I got nothing. But hold on, there was technically one quote unquote hoax for this game from Funko, of all people. Yes. Funko. For those unaware, these guys are responsible for most of the FNAF merch you'll see. Action figures, 
Funko Pops that are surprisingly decent, shitty plush toys, the gang's all here. But for some strange reason, they decided to release their own OC FNAF Funko Pop named Dark Springtrap. The official description reads, and I quote, This pop features Dark Springtrap, a form of Springtrap who only transforms when he is extremely angry. Now here's the thing. Apparently Dark Springtrap is canon, somehow. All I can possibly think of is Springtrap's appearance in the final sister location custom night cutscene, but it's never been confirmed, like, where he exists. Okay. Pizzeria Simulator had one old school teaser I distinctly remember though. It was the rare Molten Freddy screen with a string of numbers played over. Did the code do anything? Hell no. But it looks important, and that's the key element here, I guess. And yep, that's pretty much everything for 6. Now, Ultimate Customize surprisingly did have a couple hoaxes that seemed to fool people. I think this was because as a total mashup of everything FNAF, it was more susceptible to people just assuming that it might have gotten a bit strange at times. Well, hey, you wouldn't be wrong. A YouTuber by the name of Communic Gaming straight up just posted a 12-minute hoax video of a supposed Devil Freddy, and uh, this might be certified. <laughs> yep, didn't know anything about this video prior to research, and I sure as hell don't want to watch any more of this. Thankfully, the other UCN fake here is just a classic fake teaser image of what looks to be Fredbear slumped against a wall in a dark room. I mean, you can't go wrong with that. And that about covers every major hoax and fake leak I could get my hands on. There might have been a couple I missed out, but if they were that popular, I wouldn't have forgotten them. And I know I missed out on actually a ton of obscure stuff that really deserves its own video if I ever want to discuss that, you know, the rumors and theories that got strangely popular, that sort of thing. But I did want to end this video sort of talking about why the hoaxes died down, because there might be a solid reason for it. I've already discussed a couple reasons, but this user sums it up pretty well. Hoaxes became a lot harder to fabricate as time went on, because the community became a lot more skeptical after so many previous hoaxes, and were able to deconfirm them quicker with how fast new games were decompiled compared to the old games. The community also had a better understanding of both Scott's style and his development process, so it was easier to tell the difference between official images and hoaxes with a few exceptions like Nightmare JJ. Hoaxes like Withered Puppet, Phantom Bonnie, and Freddy Lands would be completely dismissed nowadays, for example. And you know what? I wholeheartedly agree. I don't think we'll ever really return to that era of uncertainty, which kinda sucks, you know. It was part of the charm of those early games. But hey, we won't have to deal with this crap anymore, so that's a freaking plus. So last time I went over a good chunk of the most infamous fake image and video leaks or whatever, but there's only a finite amount of those. Dumb theories and rumors on the other hand? Yeah, you know that faucets leak until the sun swallows the earth. But uh, goddamn, there were sure a few hoaxes I missed. So yeah, here we go again with this baby. <laughs> Hey, the two misconceptions I had here weren't even to do with any of the hoaxes, it was two of the dumbest theories instead. First, the whole the animatronics are screaming freedom thing, uh, apparently had to reverse or slow down the jump scare noise to hear it, I don't remember, but to be honest, either way, it was a stretch even at the time. And the whole reversed trailer audio thing, I'm just stupid, the suicide didn't work thing came from the sister location trailer, not Freddy's 2. One hoax I just forgot about was a Tater the Waiter Gator. Again, just like Kanji the Cats, this was another case of a harmless fan animatronic taken and passed off as real. Nothing substantial to say about this one though. Surprisingly enough though, this was posted on January 5th, months after the release of the second game, so how anyone fell for this is beyond me. You know what, fair enough, I left out some of the more iconic players here. Chrome Freddy that I intentionally left out of the last video because I thought he was meant to be a joke hoax, but nope, apparently people actually believed it. Alright. There were two fan-made trailers that really seemed to grab people's attention, with 15 and 5 million views respectively, the first of which took place in a mall shopping center, and focused on free roam, something people were dying for in a Five Nights at Freddy's 3 call at the time. And given the general rumors around that time giving light to the idea of a free roam third game, yeah, people went nuts for this thing. It looks darker, edgier, and unlike anything the previous two games had to offer. It's simple, you offer a ridiculous amount of low poly dead bodies and blood smears, you have yourself caught following. The latter featured the infamous draw kill animatronics, a redesign of the four main Freddy's robots that scream sign 14 and this is the pinnacle of character design. Nah kid, this trailer in particular didn't seem to try and fool anyone, just a reimagining of the classic FNAF formula. 
Yeah, it was another free run concept. You know what though, those original cyberpunk draw kill designs looked quite a fair bit different in the original concept art. Arguably way cooler looking, not so overkill. Unfortunately, a lot of the more subtle design choices were lost. Take the oversized eyes and larger pelvises for instance. It'd be cool to see those corrected and the models entirely remade someday, you know, looking a little closer to draw kill's original visions. Another one I missed was the evolution of this worker art. It's practically the same concept, except worked into spring chapter form. Uh, spring purple guy? Yeah, this wasn't as much of a hoax, I think. As much as it was a pretty strange, like, reverse spring trap or whatever. Anyway, people made a few variations of it, and it dissipated pretty quickly. <laughs> no, wait. Does this count? Funtime Chica. Again, not an intentional hoax, but people complained that I didn't bring it up, so here she is. Of course, the whole suicide didn't work thing was supposedly something when the trailer audio was reversed. Yeah, I'm sure it was. Oh, and finally, uh, yeah, I was right. Uh, apparently it was confirmed by a Funko employee on Instagram a while back that, yeah, this is Dark's ring chap. Why Scott decided to take him aside and turn him into a separate canonical character? I couldn't tell you. Uh... This game had hoaxes? Yeah, one hoax apparently. This kid in a foxy mask was JPEGged to hell and back and passed off as the true identity of the entity, later revealed to be Malhair mentioned in the tapes. This was one of those rare early bird hoaxes similar to Nightmare JJ, and reportedly fooled a few people. Uh, finally, I know some people complained that I did include anything for FNAF World. <laughs> That game had hoaxes? Alright, so goddamn, that should be it. I don't doubt that there's probably one or two hoaxes that I've still missed, but you gotta understand, you and I probably had different levels of exposure to whatever hoax or fake leak I missed, so don't get mad at me, alright? Let's be real, I'm gonna have to make a second follow-up, aren't I? Hey, anyway, rumors, that's the focal point of this video. Like I mentioned, there are a hell of a lot more rumors than there are hoaxes, so yeah, I'm not gonna go over every one, at least in this video. If there's any I miss, I'm sure I will be let known. Oh, and also theories and rumors that I already covered in the last video, I'm not gonna cover in this video. Yeah. Uh, where do I start? This thing was right for the strangest conspiracies. Nobody knew what the bitch this thing even was at the time. Five nights at what now? To get it out of the way, I'll kick this off with... With... Um... Game theory. I know the guys made like friggin 37 FNAF theories at this point. I'm only talking about one of them, alright? Sue me. I remember this theory sounding pretty damn plausible back in the day, and to have someone like Matt Park cover this small little indie game with a solid theory was really cool to see. And that's all I'm saying about game theory, moving on. Of course, a lot of people had their theories on the story of this game. Newspaper clippings and phone calls implied all sorts. But when it came down to it, I think most people grasped that there were five dead kids, one killer, five suits, kids in the suits, man, the story was so much simpler. So with a pretty unanimous agreement on how things were, people just had to come up with other far cooler ways to introduce just the most interesting theories. Theories like the cupcake blinking occasionally, Foxy being a good guy checking up on you, but his sudden bursting into the office giving you a heart attack, that's fun. Uh, people thought Freddy was female, if you speed up his laugh, the voice sample is clearly a young girl's voice, and he hides in the girl's toilets on Cam 7. People thought Bonnie was a girl, well, okay, Bonnie is typically a girl's name, that one's more forgivable. Fun guy haven't been stuffed inside Chica, fun guy being the killer, fun guy being Golden Freddy, it doesn't end, mate! Yeah, most of the theories here were what I like to refer to as novelty theories, they exist only for getting a reaction out of the reader. I hope. The one big theory that uh, sorta ended up half correct was the idea that Golden Freddy caused the bite of 87. And while not specifically the bite of 87, it uh, sorta of paid off. It's not like it wasn't implied by Scott's own hands though, the whole summoning Golden Freddy with 1987 and custom night thing. To be fair though, to my knowledge, that easter egg wasn't added until after people said it was a thing. This is your fault. Speaking of Golden Freddy, that was actually a fan given name adopted as quickly as in FNAF 2. In the game files, he's referred to only as Yellow Bear. So that's also your fault. There was also a rumor floating around that Freddy would jump scare you if you pirated the game. <laughs> yeah, that'll teach him. One of the biggest topics of discussion was definitely the joy of creation, a misheard quote deciphered from the Night 5 phone call. The audio on the call is a reading of an excerpt from the autobiography of a yogi. Uh, people try connecting this to the whole haunted animatronics concept, especially as the book talks about how machinery and human life are related, or how they work in unison or whatever. The actual quote reads, you are right, countless uses will be made by future generations. The scientist seldom knows contemporaneous reward. It is enough to possess the joy of creative service. But that didn't stop the joy of creation going on to inspire the name of some of the most iconic Five Nights at Freddy's fan games of all time. Whoops. And finally, to top it off, CD Plus, baby, woo! Yeah, I don't remember too much about this, but holy shit, was it a topic of discussion and a half. Holding CD and Plus on your numpad during any point in gameplay pushed you to the end of the night, supposedly. 
oh hey, what do you know? Yeah, it turns out this was a legitimate thing that existed, and to my knowledge, it's still something you can pull off to this day. If you're a dirty ass cheater dickweed. Anyway, I think that's most of the biggest ones. On to... Okay, I'm gonna do everyone a favor and ignore most of the lore-related theories from here on out. The first game had minimal story to go off of, so most points were discovered and agreed upon for the most part. I don't want to touch the story at all from here on out, unless it's some big substantial theory or whatever, otherwise this video will be friggin' hours long. One of the earliest batch of theories surrounded the names of all these new characters, most notably the toy animatronics being referred to simply as Freddy 2.0, Bonnie 2.0, Chica 2.0, yeah. Of course you have people referring to the puppets as the marionettes as early on as that very first teaser, the canonicity of that name is still debatable. Even the withered prefix for the beat up original cast of characters was originally just a headcanon. Yeah, not once is the word withered actually ever mentioned in this game. Uh, come to think of it, how many characters in this game didn't get their name from fan input? Answer, friggin' only six of them. Five if you want to count fans assuming BB was short for Balloon Boy. The Withered Shadows Puppet, debatable, and Balloon Boy, debatable. Yeah, they were either named something fairly different or just lacked a name of any kind. Also, pretty much everybody figured Freddy's 2 was a sequel. You know, the way numbers do the thing they do. Be consecutive. But despite one of the most telling signs, that being the resurrection of the murdered phone guy, yeah, most people assume this took place sometime after the first game. Okay, so for post-release theories, the whole mangled debacle, yeah, a lot of people thought they could decipher the voices in the static when they were in the office, some claiming she was calling the police, others claiming she was reporting the bite of 87, with voices supposedly talking about a boy missing his frontal lobe. To be fair, there was quite a bit of evidence pointing towards that. Mangle's jaw was always hanging open, Foxy was always suspect to have caused the bite of 87 in the first game, and this really was the first time we got any potential pointers to the true suspect. I wish I could say that nearly six years later, we could 100% debunk or confirm this. We can't. Also, that shit about Mangle's gender that still hasn't been resolved to this day, it has got, cool, okay, time to get a little stupid. People thought there was something inside Balloon Boy here, it's his shadow. People thought Withered Bonnie had a human skull in his endoskeleton head. People thought that the living tombstone was in cahoots with Scott Cawthon and that his Freddy's 2 song was canon, which indirectly reinforced the the puppet is the crying child's mother theory. People thought the FNAF subreddit moderators were in cahoots with Scott Cawthon and hid secret messages in the subreddit banner. People thought CD Plus would work again. Oh, son of a bitch. Uh, moving on to those death mini games. Yeah, purple guy, what an asshole, right, fella? Of course, the most popular theory with this aubergine mofo was that this was a phone and that this was a phone guy. People finally had their grimy mitts on that sweet bit of evidence further suggesting that plot twist, the phone guy was the killer, which we now know isn't the case. Duh, but I gotta hand it to them, people really came up with all sorts of creative ideas for what the piss this thing was. Uh, but then Scott made the super awesome decision to give the same character an entirely different sprite in the Foxy minigame, which led to theories of a completely separate pink guy. Haha, <laughs> so funny, such a funny guy. Scott, Scott Cawthon's so funny, he's so funny. So you'd assume a game centered around a rotting zombie rabbit inside a horror attraction would bring out a plethora of reasonable assumptions, right? This teaser here was the first look at the new game, of course nobody knew what this thing was, except of course everybody knew what this thing was, it was Fredbear. <laughs> Spoiler, no. Well okay, reasonably enough, the only yellow characters who appear in the franchise thus far would have been the few iterations of both Golden Freddy and Chica respectively, and unless this was some variant of Chica, Dear God, most people, myself included, assumed the former. Also, keyword most, a small minority of people genuinely believed this to be a golden foxy, which... Eh... So hey, once the trailer dropped and we watched this dickhead sporadically convulse on the ground before casually wandering up to the player... Well, technically... Yeah, thankfully most people understood how garbage that nickname was, so until Springtrap's name was revealed through a Steam update post... I'm not joking. People refer to this dude as Salvage, which is, you know, surprisingly fitting and is actually somewhat accurate, arguably even more so than his official name. However, that didn't stop people from A, ignoring the fan given name Salvage and naming him Hybrid for whatever reason, and B, assuming that he would build an animatronic using busted robot parts taken from the box in your office to go after you. Now, naming the guy Hybrid or assuming that he was a hybrid of all of the animatronics? Huh. I never understood this theory. I mean, when all we could see was the portion of the head, fine, but this is clearly a proportionally balanced rabbit shit, so no excuses for that. I'm guessing some people might have meant it more figuratively, with this thing being an amalgam of all the classic animatronics, bearing the physical form of Bonnie, the yellow of Chica, someone like that. However, people did reasonably assume that he would in fact build an animatronic from the box of parts. I mean, how cool would that have been? I have no idea because it didn't happen. Anyway, most of the speculation took place before the game released. There was not much post-release. I mean, unless you want to count the people that thought holding CD and Plus would skip the night. What a silly rumor. Of course it doesn't work. 
Yeah, I'm not kidding. It was finally taken out in FNAF 3. <laughs> but hey, speaking of that stupid ass code, it still retained relevance thanks to this stupid ass teaser. I remember this dropping for pretty much no reason. It was right before the game itself released and featured Phantom Balloon Boy alongside A10, which we never learned the significance of. Uh, but oh, what's that? CD plus on BB's hat? Oh, great. <laughs> of course, this was nothing but a coincidence, but good golly did people drive it into the ground that it uh, had some sort of significance. <laughs> Well, most people assumed it would take place in some kind of nightmare sequence. Or at Fredbear's family diner. They were right. Okay, okay, pretty much in parallel with the fall of those whack-ass hoaxes, the more out there theories took a plummet around FNAF 4 too, and pretty suddenly I might add. While people had all sorts of theories about this game's place in the timeline and a ton of friggin' questions over a lot of lore-related stuff, the more crazy wild shit that the previous three games saw fans vomit up was really nowhere to be found, aside from the facts that people thought that dream theory was a thing, okay. Yeah, that's a whole bucket of worms I'm not touching, and say what you like about what was originally intended or whatever, but uh, yeah. Nah. Of course though, that wasn't nearly as bad as this stupid sudden thing. <laughs> Whoa, what's in this thing, you five years ago may have asked? Well hey, all you had to do was click on the locks in a specific order and a specific number of times, probably. Just keep trying man, you'll get there eventually. Yeah, I can make a whole friggin' video on this. People thought the puppet, the crying child, my leftover Nambos, anything and everything was shoved into this quantum shoebox. Yeah, like I mentioned, most of the theories from here on out concerns the law. <laughs> Okay, spin-off time. Time for a whole new batch of some really cool speculations to roll in. Kicking things off with a bang, we have adult theory. Yeah, that was a thing that caught the attention of Scott himself and literally encouraged him to post a teaser instantly deconfirming any of that. Now, okay, there's a lot more to it than that, but I do not want to discuss it. Moving swiftly on. On the opposite end of the spectrum, we had the quote-unquote Fazbunker theory, where people took the deep below ground excerpt from the sister location trailer and ran with it, to the point of making the claim that you would be residing in a nuclear fallout bunker during an apocalypse stuck under the earth with the Funtime animatronics. Allegedly, this was also backed by the claim that the sirens heard in the trailer are nuclear attack alarms. Well, hey, what can I say? It's the only logical step in the story after a series of serial murderers throw the killer robots into a nuclear apocalypse. Why not? Speaking of, people thought that Ennard was some kind kind of octopus spaghetti monster thing that controlled each of the animatronics? Uh, eh, maybe. One theory that was actually fairly plausible was the idea that the spring lock suit you're trapped in on Night 4 is some kind of chica suit. In the source code of Scott's website and the lead up to the game's release, an abbreviation of Chica's Party World appeared, spawning the belief of some previously unheard of establishment featuring Chica. This was 2016, we still don't know what the hell this was, but that's besides the point. So people kind of assumes that you put two and two together, hey, the totally irrelevant character still hardly bears lore relevance, but hey, cool to speculate, right? Of course, those DLC cutscenes sparks the whole mic trap slash wall trap debate after Scott failed to confirm whether this vague looking bubble character was the same vague looking bubble character that already had several different, very different looking specs to represent him. He wasn't. Also, it totally didn't help that having Springtrap's voice slowed down at the end of Sister Location's final custom night cutscene made him sound all robotic, leading people to believe that it was Michael speaking through Ennard's voice box inside Springtrap. Russian doll looking ass, but hey, that's debunked, innit? it? Scott made a comment on a game theory video, and uh, yeah, people weren't too happy knowing that it wasn't a retcon after all. Scott just decided to wait a year and a half to clear up a misconception that could have been avoided entirely. Uh, what else? People thought that the very first full teaser for the game was Toy Bonnie with some unique interpretations to go by, that the puppet was supposedly in a reflection in the trailer, right here. Also, people thought that Valora contains the soul of William Afton's dead wife, I don't know. This entry in particular was particularly difficult to make any assumptions over, as up until its release, it was totally shrouded in mystery. Yeah, Scott was fairly cagey with this one for a long while, with the only tangible teasers being this silhouette of what we could only assume to be a redesign of Circus Baby of some sort, a Freddy Fazbear plush with strings in the backdrop, and this minigame style teaser. The posters and backgrounds of the former led people to believe that the new game would take place at a freak show, supposedly featuring twisted and mangled versions of the animatronics from Sister Location, prompting the idea of this being a direct sequel to that game, they were half right. The Freddy Plush Strings teaser was fairly confusing at the time, but in hindsight is very cool. The minigame teaser on the other hand, yeah, this was totally meaningless. People thought it had something to do with the FNAF 2 minigames, I don't know. Things picked up for sister location, but hot damn did entertaining speculation start to thin out from here. There go, most of the theories for this thing tended to piggyback off that sister location spring trap cutscene. The I'm going to come find you line sparks the idea for some people that you'd be tasked with tracking down William Afton in some kind of special facility or something. But it's impossible to talk about this game without mention of the 
the redesigned robots, and while people didn't seem to care for the majority of them, Springtrap or Scraptrap struck a nerve with people. People either accepted this as a total redesign or theorized that William Afton climbed out of the Springtrap suit, wandered around for a while like the sentient pepperami he is, and suited up into a slightly different looking decaying spring bonnie suit. And he grew bones, because let's face it, you can't have a franchise villain without the ability to bend physics to suit his appearance. The only truly significant theory to come out of this thing was Mike Hell vs Will Hell, an ongoing debate that attempted to figure out if Ultima Customite is really just, you know, one of two dudes own personal hell, an endless cycle of fighting against the same animatronics over and over and over again, reliving the nightmare that, in Mike's case, he would have lived, and in William's case, would have created. But otherwise, were there any stupid ass theories to take the piss out of? Hell no. Yeah, I think we've kind of reached a point now where it's less about coming up with wacky solutions to totally open-ended questions, rather focusing on how to fit any of the pre-existing lore together. Yeah, how's that been going? I doubt we'll see the theories of yesteryear ever return, after all, 99% of them are garbage. But hey, it's hard not to think back to the days of Foxy as a good guy and not think, huh. That was funny to consider believing for about 10 seconds. Now, having that all said and done, is there anything I might have missed? Yes, definitely. Like I mentioned in the intro, it's inevitable that I'm going to miss something. Like, it's going to happen. But I'm not perfect, nor do I want to shove every conceivable theory possible into this video. And I know some people are going to complain, hey, you didn't mention that time my mate told me that Fredbear has a urinary tract infection. Like, it's impossible for me to cover everything. But to the people eager to see me put together a potential future part to this where I cover everything I missed, and to the people complaining that they want these videos out faster, just CD plus that bitch, it probably works. So, uh, yeah. FNAF rumors, they're crazy man, whoa. I think for the most part, the retro theories are gone, but hey, with the release of Help Wanted and Special Delivery, I feel like they're ushering in a new era of FNAF games. Less so focused on the history of the restaurants themselves or the Afton family, rather delving into a brand new story with the previous games as a basis. And hey, maybe we'll finally get everything we ever wanted back in the FNAF 2 days, and holy shit, is that a shopping mall? So, I read the title, you know what you came for. Five Nights at Freddy's. I am acutely aware of the fact that this series has had some astronomical growth over the past 16 and a half years, rooted in humble beginnings with the release of Five Nights at Freddy's for the PS2 and ending up one of the world's largest media franchises. I also love lying. Making shit up is a recurring theme I've discussed a whopping total of twice, and after two years and roughly seven or so people deciding they very much enjoyed listening to me chat shit, I figured... Well, I mean... <laughs> Maybe I should do that again. So hey, round three, baby, the final bout. I want to cover everything I missed in fake leaks and hoaxes and in theories and rumors, as well as document all the incredibly weird bootleg spooks that have materialized since the release of those videos in a surprising comeback of hoax culture. But hey, as questionably intrigued as I am to talk about some good old-fashioned hoax and rumor garbo again, do bear in mind, due to the whole picking up the dinner scraps nature of the whole discussion, I can almost guarantee you this will be one hell of a horribly structured video, and to that I say, it at least complements the lore of the game series I'm discussing. As always, rumors are essentially he said, she said, and they said, we're inclusive on the show, and are otherwise practically hearsay. They take no effort to spit out, there's 10 billion of them, I'll be cherry picking the rumors and theories I find actually interesting. Hoaxes, on the other hand, are essentially supplementary fake proof to an interesting enough theory, though it can exist without a prior word of mouth prediction too. The real good shit is scarce, I'll be presenting to you pics of the litter for the stuff I think made enough of a relative impact. Keyword scarce, I already went through doing my best to mention any I missed initially in FNAF rumors, there are not going to be a lot of those here. So yeah. <laughs> so hey, guess who ended up glossing over a stupidly specific chunk of false rumors? Like, for example, the idea that you played as a robot. <laughs> like, come on, you expected people to believe the stoic, stone-faced, early 2010s indie horror character capable of, like, two core mobility functions was somehow an organic being? Of course you did. People thought the cupcake was a hidden camera of some kind? I'm sure would have made for just the most entertaining six hours of security footage pointed to anywhere but the immediate threat. Apparently, the funny-looking drawing of Bonnie in the office and in the West Hall was some kind of foreshadowing for Springtrap. There were rumblings of the existence of an alleged FNAF movie a little under a year before its official confirmation. <laughs> I don't remember this thing on the slightest, though a Wikipedia listing claimed a release date of 2017, featuring the voice cast behind every Nickelodeon cartoon under the sun and the talent behind an iconic, sentient, pissed off robot. You know, there are worse choices. And finally, supposedly, the cupcake's real name is Carl, which at this point I think is widely and rightfully believed to be nothing more than just a cute fan given name, not unlike FNAF 4's Freddles, for example. Speaking of, though, as far as any extra 
full on hoaxes for the thing go, surprisingly there was one more fairly underground spoof so to speak. Pre-Gold and Freddy Patch set in each character's AI difficulty value to read 1987 in FNAF's custom night mode, and Tonkin Freddy's nose with Chica visible in the window would supposedly cause the cupcake in the office to turn golden. I mean it's almost cool. We already had Golden Freddy, I suppose this was just the Tesco value version of bragging rights for people who couldn't find him. Like the participation trophy of easter eggs. Unfortunately I found squat in regards to any real remnants of this hoax's existence back in the day besides the one image, so to the unlucky son of a gun that fell for the shit sucking egg anyway on to BLAF 2! Now hey I covered a decent amount of jank last two times but that don't mean people never got stupider. People thought Wither Chica exhibited an 8 on her endoskeleton as if to indicate that each withered animatronic was numbered respectively like they were mass manufactured off a production line or something. You know I've fallen for dumb shit before but I can at least write never been trolled by a generated cloud texture off my bucket list. People thought the purple man in the death minigames was named Vincent and loved toast and- Does this even count as a rumor? Under the alias Rebornica at the time they created an incredibly popular webcomic featuring acres upon acres of headcanons, the accuracy of which to the games may have gotten just a little lost through word of mouth. But hey how could I blame anybody for thinking that any of this was canon? Purple guy, toast, it probably says Vincent if you squint real hard into the static. Enough of that shit though, time for something I hope sounds a tad more reasonable. Toy Chica was heavily theorized of course bite of 87 given the fact that her beak is removable and oh now her mouth is solid plastic and capable of motor functions. Well, I'm guessing the idea was that having already caused the bite of 87 the force of crushing a child's frontal lobe would have loosened the connection from her beak to her head, something I slightly doubt given her otherwise pristine condition and the total lack of law enforcement and or immediate shutdown of operations. That's or perhaps the idea was that with the removal of her beak a gap coincidentally big enough for a fourth grader Scott to fit into reveal Chica's endoskeleton braces underneath or something. Anyway, speaking of dead people, both Shadow Freddy and Shadow Bonnie, despite the lack of a unified general look, were supposedly both Springlock failure victims, a theory I don't hate. I don't know, it was like one of the only theories that wasn't unanimously agreed upon by everybody with a pulse that I looked at and thought, yeah. And finally, indubitably, subsequently, last but not least, oh my god it moved. The Paper Plate Pals. Paper Pals, Paper Pussies, really any variation of the phrase Paper Plate Dolls are three mysteriously handcrafted iterations of assumedly Freddy, Bonnie and Anonymous Human Entity 37. Or probably Balloon Boy or something. Hi. Despite their mere role as decoration for the place, people were adamant that something was up with these critters, in part due to the uncanny nature of the faces, Bonnie specifically resembling the crying child posters from the first game, and the fact that old Lefty over here straight up dips and enters your office, never to return. This is such a strange little easter egg that never found any conclusion whatsoever, nor poses any more of a supernatural anomaly in future series than in FNAF 2, yet remained a significant topic of discussion for a while. These lose ain't the subject of any crazy conspiracies out there or not, and I just adore the novelty of these stupid little guys sparking so much intrigue. Look at this goofy ass smile and tell me you don't want to just shove him under a desk lamp and interrogate him for questioning. I, I don't know. People thought the bad ending was canon. They were right. I think I found a wet sock at the bottom of this barrel. I think, yeah, especially after a second pass, on top of the fact that this game literally existed to tie up any loose ends the series had at the time, any real topic of discussion here is a pretty barren shot in the dark. I don't know, Springtrap's addicted to Tylenol, there, you happy? FNAF 4! <laughs> so people thought you were in a coma the entire time. That was kind of uh, the big one uh, for a wee bit. Also, everybody ever wanted to kill each other because nobody could decide if this thing was shown off the bite of 87 or the bite of 83. I don't think even Scott knows at this point or probably cares. And again, here's where the more out there rumors began to piss off. You had the classic dream theory, tiny toy chica, balloon kid, yada yada yada, but I don't care. The more zany, non lore centric stuff was truly apparent during the big teaser drops for the game. You got these sick ass macro shots of each character and some dastardly lighting. I saw this pop up on the Five Nights at Freddy's subreddit for the first time and thought, wow, that's a cool fan game teaser. I, could you blame me? Most official images at the time looks like this. Five Nights at Freddy's 4 teasers were way too kick-ass for their own good. You and I both know it. The big influx of rumors I saw pop up were after the drop of Nightmare Freddy's reveal. Some speculating that this was a deteriorated Spring Freddy, a non fredbear Springlock bear costume variant companion to Spring Bonnie that apparently existed. The rumor that Freddy would use his drill fingers to punch holes through your security door in the context of a weird reimagining of the first game that had randomly switched to look more spooky when it felt like it, potentially in the form of an abstract dream sequence. Or that this would be a robotic museum attraction piece, either as some kind of a recovered withered variation of Freddy, or as an animatronic built specifically to spook people, the idea being that regardless he'd appear alongside a historic showcase of the auctioned off remnants of the devastated FNAF 3 location. 
You know, I'm starting to realize that by this point, people's theories for these things sounded way more exciting than what we actually got. Terrible things come in small packages. Damn, look at that rim lighting and that stuffy spring bonnie doll. Honestly, I can't imagine what kind of wacky shit Scott could do with something like this. What? Bath world! Oh my days, fam! How did I miss any of this? Answer, because there's like three points of interest. I know I skipped over FNAF World entirely in both the Hogs and Rumor videos, likely because this thing was such an obscure left turn that I think people were too busy trying to figure out what the bitch this thing even was before moving on to gaslighting people over it. Aside from the rumors of an ice cave zone cut from the game, supported by the equally cut ice cave theme briefly featured on Scott's website, only a tiny handful of wacky rumors came to light, namely people theorizing on whatever this dancing shadow dude's deal was, predictions for an update 3 featuring adventure versions of the characters from Sister Location, and the whole implied several Scott Cawthons theory, in which the man allegedly takes three different forms in the game, through his avatar Anim Dude, Desk Guy, and potentially this dude hanging out with, presumably, his kids watching a show together. All of these are equally as interesting to me, and I'm sure somebody out there just wishes that was a compliment anyway, onto Sister Location! Yendo, here's a stupid bitch I never mentioned. This thing is essentially Sister Location's Golden Freddy, appearing as a fun time Freddy Endor skeleton with yellow eyes. People thought he was A, Golden Freddy, B, Fredbear, or C, an enigma never to be elaborated on ever again in the history of anything ever. Deal all of the above. Pizzeria City Leader! Let's talk about a dead dog! I, I didn't mean for that to sound so enthusiastic. Aside from the inevitable mushroom cloud theories and puzzle pieces, the final classic FNAF game inevitably would give us- Ch Shut up! One delightfully morbid theory was that the soul of the dog implied to have been run over by William Afton was taken and transferred to Mangle's robot body. I'm assuming the thought process behind this shit was that I guess Mangle is literally a mangled roboticized canine corpse and that if I were out here killing kids to extract the physical form of Undertale's determination to inject into animatronic hosts, I'm already the worst person in the world, why not rub it in by forever binding roadkill to an immortal body that acts as a permanent reminder of how it died? I guess the dog was also a Siamese twin. Aside from that, I don't recall a lot of crazy ass theories or rumors I didn't mention last time. UCN. Ultimate custom night, are you having a giggle? Help wanted! I don't recall anything about this thing I haven't already yelled about, isn't that just bananas? Especially with how freaking different this entry was, an entirely fresh take on the story, a 3D engine, a whole new team working on this shit, I have a theory that Glitch Trap is Rabbit from Winnie the Pooh. Uh, there just wasn't much to work with here, that wasn't already laid out in a way that it still plays gen generally down the correct road. After all, the bulk of Help Wanted is essentially just a slew of remixed ideas and mechanics from the old games packed into a full virtual reality experience, as if to serve as the Five Nights at Freddy's series Sonic Generations, if you will. Other than that, we got nothing. Special delivery! Oh, <laughs> so this one has about 10 zillion rumors and I am covering none of them. I say rumors, I'm pertaining more to upcoming animatronic skin predictions and character releases. Uh, this is essentially a gacha game. If you can think of a skin, they've touched on it already. Like hi. But that is a whole moderately uninteresting topic surrounding a game I am already completely uninvested in. And it's riddled with in-game advertisements, don't you hate it when you're trying to enjoy a piece of media and all of a sudden you get some asshole trying to sell you something? Yeah, me too. Security breach! Oh hey, security breach! I know a lot of you wanted me to talk about this game. Anyway, man, Steel Wall were cagey with this one, with the game's late 2019 announcement and no real hint as to what this thing even was until a cinematic glimpse almost a whole year later. It took even longer for any kind of nudge as to how the fundamental gameplay would work, though with the ongoing outbreak of chickenpox in addition to several other assumed factors coming into play internally, the delays are understandable. Lucky for us today though, those extra months in the oven gave the community plenty of time to theorize and deduct what security breach could even be especially with the title being the first in the series to exhibit true free roam, something fans have been longing for since the second game. Of course, we know now that this is essentially Sega World meets Resident Evil 2, but back in the old 2020, the idea of a truly free 3D environment to dash around and give way to all sorts of gameplay scenario concepts, except never mind, here's how the central mechanic of the game works. Thanks, Funko. Yeah, I'm guessing that while Security Breach was taking its sweet time stretching its legs, somebody decided that holy pissing shit that people need to know that apparently this thing played out like an E-rated Evangelion.
Which it did, they were right, isn't that nutty? Miscellaneous merch leaks and drops were the real fuel to the fire to keep the theorists and all of us bright and burning, making all sorts of assumptions and intricate ideas that are not that interesting enough for me to pick out and mention, aside from people going funny monkey over the Pizzaplex trademark being filed, with many people assuming that to be the name of the game. But other than that, my ass itches. I mean, there are only so many conclusions you can draw from the idea of a Freddy Fazbear shopping center. I, I mean, I mean, mall, I mean, t t t shit. And in my honest humble opinion, no one rumor, theory, or prediction gauged my interest at all, at least pre-release. However, for precisely the second time this video, we have a hoax in our hands, boys. Flip side Springtrap, baby! In the February 25th, 2021 gameplay trailer at about the end of the video marks a short clip of an ominous metal claw scraping at the ground a faint purple glow in tow. That detail alone was admittedly a hefty cache of fans to chew on. People legitimately had no idea if this was a nightmare animatronic endoskeleton or Springtrap's big return. Well, assumedly somebody really wanted that second one. January 3rd, 2021, somebody posted the first Flipside Springtrap to 4chan, boasting about having enjoyed the DualShock, a mislabeling of the PS5's DualSense controller, most likely. July 29th, 2021, a barrage of images are posted to 4chan. First up, this sucker, a much clearer sneak peek of what's implied to be the same model we saw in the first leak, though it frames to look as if to be an altered version of the shop from the trailer, with the animatronic upright and potentially clipping through the floor if we take into account the impossible angle. Supposedly, to prove themselves, the leaker posted this, a second angle of the original Flipside Springtrap teaser, further solidifying the idea that they did, in fact, have access to the character before the trailer dropped in February. A third image, seemingly unconnected to the other hoaxes at hand, was also dropped at the height of the hype and, uh, oh, everything was fake as shit. Yeah, so it turns out, not only was each one of these images totally fabricated, but not one of these things were coordinated between anybody in the slightest. It's a bit wild seeing such an unorthodox collaborative effort for something I don't think I've ever seen before in the Five Nights at Freddy's fan community. Three totally unique iterations of the same hoax existing in the same place if only to come together just to lie to thousands and thousands of people on the internet. <laughs> It's beautiful, really. And as far as the mainline FNAF games go, I'd be willing to wager that that's, for the most part, it. And after a third scrub through of all things lying, I felt like my journey to document all the crazy shit this fandom's regurgitated over the years is finally over. Um, except for everything else. Everything else! <laughs> that's right, baby! Oh, you thought I was done? Yeah, there ain't nothing game specific I haven't punctured already with a tetanus infested stick, but goodness gracious, is there a relatively reasonable bucket load of hot miscellaneous shit? yet to be unturned. So, in chronological order, the real Freddy's phone number hoaxes of 2015 give lunatic fans a string of arbitrary numbers hidden in a webpage that mean absolutely nothing and a couple straws to grasp at, and you end up with several incredibly confused companies totally disconnected from the game franchise with several incoming calls about animatronics and dead kids, including a couple actual pizzerias with the misfortune of featuring Freddy in the name of the eatery, with one of these places reportedly receiving hundreds of calls a day from annoying shithead children regarding this wacky crap. While the situation was severe enough to issue an official statement from Scott Cawthon, one of the restaurants was surprisingly cool about things, offering a discount to FNAF fans for a limited time. The 2020 fake movie leaks predominantly featuring a photo of a propped up Freddy Fazbear animatronic accompanied by, assumedly, a reference cutout and an endoskeleton frame hanging out stage left. And a quote-unquote leaked poster, both somewhat convincing in their own right, but equally fake as shit to the credit of Bon Bon Films. And finally, the whole mid-2020 Chuck E. Cheese hoaxes saga involving a hefty amount of bullshit, including a series of faked news headlines detailing missing children, animatronics misbehaving after dark, and the death of a night guard watchman, and a page from an employee instructional booklet tasking all night shift workers to wear a spare Chuck E. Cheese costume head in order to psych out the built-in facial recognition software integrated into the stage animatronics. Cause that was definitely a thing. Also, these are all riddled with spelling errors, making the fact that these four images made actual big media headlines all the more entertaining. Yeah, people are desperate enough to want FNAF to be real that an alarming slice of the general non-FNAF population really thought, I'm not advocating for child murder, but to post the page's credit, the director behind this whole show, people still fall for this shit. Like, often. I mean, fake headlines, yeah, people are stupid, it's understandable. The whole facial recognition page, though, is admittedly fairly faithful to the tone and visual style of those old manuals. And at first glance, I can easily see why and how this would make you and I look like a silly bitch for thinking it true. A follow-up hoax of sorts released in mid-2021 featured another glimpse into the booklet, detailing a console mode for the onstage animatronics, encouraging parents to shove their baby's head into a foreign death chamber in order to shut them the piss up. I appreciate the novelty of this one, risking having your child's cranium crushed by a greasy, oily hunk of metal. 
But as far as really fooling anybody goes, I think this dips a tad too far out of the realm of possibility, as much of a knife-wielding mosh pit the entirety of the 80s was when it came to the safety of any living being under the sun. Uh, oh, w wait, uh, hold on, I, I think we got one more? Oh hey, it's the golden cupcake hoax I showed off back when I talked about FNAF 1 hoaxes, you remember? The hoax itself was a hoax, it never existed. I made it up about two weeks before I showed it off, you're welcome. Yeah, I figured, you know what would be funny? Gaslighting. I, uh, can you blame me? Is it really a Gamotion hoaxes video without a submission from yours truly? I made Nightmare JJ, okay? I earned this. And if you're wondering how many people actually fell for this stupid asinine shit, um, add this number to this number. Suffice to say, it's more than two, and that's what matters. Okay though, it's hard not to feel bad seeing so many people apparently fully remember this hoax existing. I believe I've created some kind of Mandela effect, I don't know whether to be terrified or impressed. The idea for this thing was kind of an amalgamation of the whole golden cupcake easter egg from Freddy's 3 and this wacky shit from FNAF 2, complete with the whole pinprick eyes shtick. I'm assuming the case here is that I gaslit several thousand people into believing in something I thought up in about seven minutes. Hell's already got a place for me, don't you worry. Eh, I'm probably not kidding, something tells me I'm going there soon. Anyway, FNAF hoaxes and rumors, ladies, gents, and non-binary friends, I feel like I'm compelled to say something inspiring and monumental here. Um, but I don't want to. This shit is just dumb, frickin' dumbass, stupid, dog shit, horse shit fun, and as stupid as all these hoaxes and rumors got, it's hard not to feel a little giddy over being at least a small part in the overarching bullshit and canon. I've said it before and I'll say it again, while the golden era of wacky internet pranks revolving around the franchise has passed, I'll always look at the influx of pointing fingers and chatting shit with a sense of disorder. Not one other series I've interacted with as heavily as with Five Nights at Freddy's comes to mind with such an active history of wild zany theories and for that, it's hard not to reflect on that brief period as a stupid gullible kid lightheartedly. Yeah, that's nice and all, but then I think back to the times where people legitimately thought that the Bite of 87 could potentially be referencing the Bite of 1887 and think, yeah, maybe it's for the best. To be fair, arguably more terrifying, you'd probably die a slow, painful death from a really cool infection or something, as opposed to the instant cracking of your skull or whatever. But I don't think hoaxes are entirely dead. You know, evidently. So while we may just find ourselves scrambling to find answers for the next big FNAF leak sometime in the future, it is not my goddamn problem. Y'all notice the amount of game-specific hoaxes I mentioned this time round that I didn't make up amounts to, uh, <laughs> one? I've wiped the board clean with this stuff, methinks, so for now, I think that's it. Specifically for hoaxes and rumors, you know how contagious this series is? I'll be talking about Fredbear's urinary tract infection till I die! <laughs> wow, well, that was one hell of a ride. I'm kidding, it's been like two seconds for me. Join me next time when I'm talking about any other video game at all. Seriously, any other game will do. I've had my fun with Five Guys at Fridays, but I've basically covered everything there is to cover at this point. And legit, I'm looking forward to talking about all kinds of other weird, creepy indie type stuff now that there's finally a rest in anything FNAF news related. Hey buddy, could you just drag me back underground please?